We are in the middle of January, and January is always that interesting time of year. We sort of set our plans for what we want to do for the next 12 months. And oh yeah, Old Retro has made a New Year's resolution or two as it relates to this channel and fishing at old school. You know, for me, one of the big resolutions I've made this year is to fish it even more old school. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Happy Saturday and welcome to Retro Bassin. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, I definitely tend to gravitate to lures of that era. But make no mistake, there's a ton of old school gold that is much, much older. And part of my New Year's resolution is to get into some of that really truly old school, truly vintage stuff. As you can see, I've got an old school uh, Umco tackle box beside me, which is loaded up with just a few of the old wooden baits that I've got in my collection. Now, when it comes to the truly old school, I am definitely a neophyte, which is a little bit of the reason for this episode. A lot of Bass and Butts ask me if I'm a member of the NFL CC and that is the National Fishing Lure Collectors Club. Truth be told, I did sign up for that organization just prior to the pandemic, but like so many of my grand plans during 20 and 21, I never made it to a meeting and my membership expired. So as part of my New Year's resolution, I did rejoin the NFLCC and became an official member, and I just received my introductory members pack, which I'm gonna open on camera. But before we get to this, I do want to talk just a little bit about this organization, let you know why I joined and what I hope to accomplish with the NFLCC in 2022. So just who is the National Fish and Lure Collectors Club? Well, it's a nonprofit, educational, international organization that was founded in 1976. And the primary objective is to foster an awareness of fishing tackle collecting as a hobby and also to assist members in the location, identification, and trading of vintage fishing-related equipment. As you can tell, Bass and Buds, that mission statement is right up old Retro's alley. Now, the NFLCC hosts about a dozen regional and national shows every year where tackle collectors from probably all around the world get together to show off their old-school gold. Now, admittedly, a lot of the members of the NFLCC probably focus on lures that are a little bit before my time, but that's okay. Looking back on the 2021 season of Retro Bassin, one of my favorite episodes was the short amount of time we got to spend with a retired biology teacher down in Corpus Christi, Texas, who was an expert on bingo lures. Just as exciting to me as the lures themselves was the really incredible story of the collector. How he came to collect bingo lures as a young man and how he sustained that passion throughout his whole life. I'll be the first to tell you, when it comes to vintage tackle, I'm more a jack of all lures and an expert of none. I have the blanket belief that if it's old, it's gold, but there is just so, so much tackle out there that one possibly can't be an expert at everything. And that is what is so cool about the NFL CC, because a lot of those folks get really, really specialized into one, maybe specific brand or even a specific lore within that brand. One example was we did a recent episode on the Fred C. Young Big O, and I got in touch with NFL CC member Mark Ng, who is so passionate about the Big O's, he has a entire Facebook page dedicated to that lore called the Big O Connection. I have no doubt that NFL CC meeting would be a really target-rich environment to find some of the most amazing collections and collectors out there. 
And this year, I am making the commitment to hit at least one or two NFL CC meetings. I'll let you know about at the end of the video. All right, let's get this bad boy open. <laughs> uh, and see what is inside. All right, so let's take a look at what you receive when you join the NFL CC. First things first is this. It is my 2021-2022 membership card to the National Fishing Lure Collectors Club uh, and all the benefits there too. <laughs> nice. You also get this, which is a membership directory to the NFL CC for 2022. I don't think that I am in the old directory yet, but it is pretty cool to flip through the pages and to see just how many old school fishing fools there are out there uh, around the country and, and honestly around the world. But I am most excited about this, uh, the NFL CC Gazette. This is the winter issue 2021. Uh, it's got a circulation of 2,050. This is the first publication devoted exclusively to tackle collection and angling history. Right up old Retro's Alley. By the way, it looks like we've got some old school gold on the cover here. I don't know a ton about these old baits. That looks like a Rush Tango to me. And these might be Shakespeare wood minnows. You can kind of tell by the two propellers and that five hook design. But I'm sure somebody out there probably knows exactly what those guys are. All right, so uh, first things first, we've got the masthead here. Uh, looks like the NFL CC officers. We've got George uh, Chrisman, who does live in Texas. That's pretty cool. Uh, as well as the treasurer, the chairman, uh, and all of the vice presidents. This is a logo that's pretty well associated with the NFL CC. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's a couple of frogs. Look like they're fishing uh, on a tree. I don't know what they're trying to catch, but I see that logo a lot whenever I check out this organization. We got a letter from the president talking about the upcoming year of collecting and trading. Ah, uh, here we go. This is pretty cool. So what is this? The mouse bait of Fort Worth, Texas. So that is an interesting bait. That looks pretty similar to a almost like a head and field mouse or a Shakespeare mouse. Pretty similar bait. It's got a little metal lip on it, a couple of probably leather ears, a nice tail, and a single hook. Let's see what it says about the old mouse bait. It says the mouse bait of Fort Worth, Texas has long been considered one of the classic fishing lures, both by Texas lure collectors as well as mouse collectors. The history of the lure and the maker have remained hidden for almost 100 years. But a recent find helps establish the maker of the lure, uh, and I'm going to assume that's him, uh, George Emmett Maxson. <laughs> that is awesome. So a whole article about this old school wooden lore looks like probably from the early 1900s. And so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages dedicated to a lore that you've probably never heard of. Ah, oh, I just love that. All right, let's read one of these ads. The Mouse. Uh, the new game fish lore. A wonderful ease in casting. Perfect action. A sensation everywhere. Anglers have longed for this perfect bait. Weight about one half of an ounce. You could have gotten yours for $1. Uh, I've got a feeling if you go to an NFL CC meeting, it's probably going to cost you eh, just a few more bucks than that these days. Dealers wanted, but uh, this thing was sold out of Fort Worth, Texas, thus the name the old Fort Worth Mouse. Rare or Scarce Fly Rod Lures Part 5. <laughs> Just in case you missed Part 1 through 4. Um, this is wild. Look at this. Uh, just about every old school uh, permutation of a fly you could want. And as you know, Bass and Buds, I've got a few too many rabbit holes that I already go down. I cannot get into fly fishing. Sorry. So I'm going to have to blaze through these pages. I am running out of room in the old retro studio as it is. Fish in a baking soda box by uh, R. Steve Irwin, MD. Let's see what it says here. 
Uh, around the turn of the century, uh, 1900, not 2000, uh, got it, <laughs> a human's closeness to the natural world prevailed as America was still largely rural. The regulars at the Rochdale Pool Hall in West Central Indiana, where I grew up, were excited about all the sunfish that congregated in the newly formed pools beneath Rolling Stone Bridge on Big Walnut Creek. Fishing was a big part of life then. Many companies cleverly use this love of the outdoors to promote their products. Marketing through wildlife paled among all companies, however, when their efforts were compared to the successful 78-year advertising campaign of the makers of that venerable household product, Arm & Hammer Baking Soda. This company created a national fad with the exquisite bird cards that they inserted into each box of their baking soda. What is less well known is that starting in 1900, they also ran a series of 38 delightful fish cards. And you can see the Arm & Hammer baking soda on these cards. That looks like a black bass of sorts, sheep's head, <laughs> a nice yellow perch, a northern pike, <laughs> all in a box of baking soda. Here is one of my favorite parts about the NFLCC and one of the reasons that I cannot wait to hopefully get to at least one in-person meeting this year, the members. This is a member profile on uh, Lauren Hirsch, and look at Lauren's man cave. Um, oh my goodness, there is like every inch of that thing is filled up with some old school gold. That is really wild. I mean, just to think of the amount of work you would have to go through to collect this much gear. So it looks like Lauren is a fan of fly fishing. I see a ton of creels in here, um, but I'm sure that he's just got shelf after shelf of, whew, just old school, old school awesomeness. All right, what do we have here? Safety Lures of Ohio. The concept of this lure was novel. The way the hooks were installed made it possible for a fisherman to safely handle the lure and carry it in his pocket without getting hooked. But he would still be able to snag a fish when the hooks were exposed while fishing. Oh, so there must be a way. You can sort of see a little treble hook hidden back here. There must be a way to expose that hook. But otherwise, you can just keep it in your pocket, I guess, if you didn't have a tackle box. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I don't know if these are uh, pictures from the author's personal collection, but that is a pretty cool looking lure. Almost looks like a little, uh, I don't know what, like a man's one minus or something, doesn't it? It's a short little subsurface bait. I guarantee you that thing runs a foot or less under the water. And there's a rear view of the hook kind of hidden in the body of the lure. And a very nice display of Glen Willow's safety lure. Yeah, you could probably pick that thing up for uh, 20 bucks shipped, huh? <laughs> or not. And that looks like a safety lure there with the hooks exposed. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I guess, yeah, if you were just running down the bank and you had to throw a couple lures in your pocket and you didn't want them to get all snagged up, you grab yourself a safety lure. Uh, the Engine Joe Frog. Huh. Fishing with frogs in the 1960s and 1970s was exciting. Bill Plummer made a big splash with the bass fishing market with his bass frog. Burke and DeLong both offered a little weedless plastic frogs that were designed for spinning gear. Snagproof offered its hollow belly snagproof frog, a predecessor to, to many of today's frogs. And the Garcia frog was also pulling huge bass out of the weeds. Much has been written about Bill Plummer and his various frog lures. The snag-proof frog, which is still being made, is also the subject of many outdoor magazine articles. Nevertheless, and although there may be one, I have never seen an article referencing the Garcia frog, and it led me to write this commentary. In searching for the origins of the Garcia frog, I discovered that this frog was actually designed and marketed previously in a local market by a fisherman and lure designer, Joseph J. Sabol of West Hazleton, Pennsylvania. Are you kidding me? Okay, so that's where the old Injun Joe frog looks like. And I was going to say, that does look pretty similar to a Garcia frog that I've seen. 
There's a, a patent application for the Joe Sabal's frog. And look at that. Yep, there it is, the old Garcia frog, which looks pretty darn similar. That is a <laughs> that is too cool. As we wrap up, it looks like the last article of the magazine. That is really indicative, I think, of what you get with the NFL CC. You get folks who are hyper specialized in a specific lore. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, the, the old author of this article probably knows more about this frog than, well, anybody else in the world. And the back of the old magazine looks like there is some apparel from the NFL CC Club shop. Ooh, look at that. A red NFL CC vintage tee and blue NFL CC shield tee for 20 bucks. That is pretty cool. I might have to grab a shirt or two from the old club shop. All right, Bass and Buds, hopefully you enjoyed that little walkthrough of my care back from the National Fish and Lure Collectors Club. Here's a list of all the shows they still have planned for 2022. Now, there is a regional show in Temple, Texas in April, as well as a national show in Springfield, Illinois in July. I'm gonna try to attend one or both of those meetings, and I will definitely keep the Bass and Buds up to date on the old Instagram as to my whereabouts. If you do want to join the NFL CC, trust me, it is $35, very well spent. The website is nflcc.org. And when you do sign up, just a few weeks later, you'll get the care pack that I got today. Last but not least, if you are a member of the NFL CC and you've got a collection that you think the old Retro Bass and Buds would like to see, Drop a comment down below and we'll hook up real soon. Until next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass and Buds.